Hi everyone, welcome back to SG Come Out Reviews and today we're driving the Sanyong Corando. So fun fact, the Corando nameplate is actually Korea's longest surviving single nameplate. However, if you quickly go and Google Corando and check out the first generation model, you realize that hey, it looks nothing like this. It might be a completely different car. Right, because that one was basically like a Jeep, you know, one of those old school off-roading, sort of almost wartime kind of vehicle, right? This here is the fourth generation model and look at it, it looks nothing like the original one. In a market that's heavily saturated with compact crossovers, it can be difficult for a car to stand out. The Corando, I think, visually at least, I think it does a good job of cutting a very distinct look. It's nice and boxy, very squarey, and I think it looks quite muscular in that sense. You know, we've got a big front grille here, uh, LED DRLs, although still projection headlamps. And overall, I think it's a good looking car. Now, if you go check out the back, Again, at the back, I think the design of the Corando really emphasizes its overall size. You know, we have these lights here separated by this really wide silver bar. Also, we have this rear bumper thing that I'm pretty sure isn't functional, but it does add to the sense of ruggedness and slight quirkiness of this car. So if you look at the boot, so according to Sanyong, we have a 551 liter boot. This is definitely not 551 liters. I mean, look at it. It's kind of small, right? Uh, for what it is right now, we can fit a big luggage. It's not a very deep boot, so it's not going to pass anti trolley length test. But the little secret with this car is that there's actually more space. So we can actually remove these floor pieces and then we've got a much bigger... Now this looks like 551 liters. And the cool thing is with these pieces, you can actually slot this into some of these holes here. And what it basically does is that it compartmentalizes the boot so you can separate it to put your dirty clothes and shoes separate from your clean stuff or if you really just want maximum space we can also do this then you just have a nice big boot so you know entirely functionally practical now let's go check out the inside of the car the Sangyong Corando is priced at $135,888 the 1.5 litre four cylinder inline turbocharged engine produces 161 brake horsepower and 280 newton meters of torque and is paired to a six speed automatic transmission. For more details on the Sanyong Corando or any other car, head on to sgcarmart.com to help you make the smart choice on your next car. Here in the backseat of the Corando, I must say it's very, very spacious. So, this is my driving position, and look at how much space I have. There's so much leg room very good amount of headroom and I think for a car in this size and segment it's a much bigger cabin than I expected it to be um, as far as amenities go we have isofix points we have a 12 volt socket and seat pockets if we slide onto the middle I do like that the transmission tunnel is nice and low so you can sit very very comfortably in the middle seat put your legs together the seat is nice and wide and yeah overall I must say the space here is much more generous than I expected. Here in the front cabin of the Corando, again, I'm struck by how spacious it feels. So there's, again, plenty of headroom. Visibility all around is very good. And I must say, all these like horizontal design touches, like these aircon vents and stuff, really helps to emphasize the overall sense of size in this car. It's also a very nice and modern interior, I would say. Uh, we have a 10.25 inch TFT cluster, so it's a fully digital display that you can use to view a whole bunch of information. So you can control things like your driving assist settings, your display settings, your vehicle settings from here. And we have three different dashboard designs in that sense. We also have an infotainment system here that's, okay, this one's a little bit more on the bare bones side. So innately, it only has radio, uh, some phone connectivity, Bluetooth connectivity, and that's about it. So yeah, not much in there. Um, to really get the most out of it, you probably have to connect your phone and this car supports wired Apple CarPlay. But yeah, with your Apple CarPlay, then you have access to things like your navigation, your Spotify, your podcast, whatever it may be, right? Um, what else? Okay, we have some aircon controls. Again, nothing sort of... Yeah, it's just aircon controls. But I must say the aircon is kind of funny because on the setting which I'm using most of the time, which is the, the sort of second two fan setting 
it's actually very 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 cold you know it's a nice hot day today but you know it's really very strong the aircon but on the one fan setting it's like the aircon's not on so yeah you know you probably have it on two and it's gonna be very cold right um other than that we have usb port a 12 volt socket but yeah it's, it's a fairly simple interior you know we have a manual handbrake we do have some drive modes we have normal we have sport and we have winter which you and i would never use in singapore because we don't have winter Woo! um as far as materials go okay we have cloth seats and some people may think eh, cloth seats, eh, why not leather actually i think cloth seats are great i think they are nice and comfortable they, they feel nice they are easy to maintain and they will last over time and you know for what it is i think these seats are very very comfortable so no complaints um yes the cabin has quite a lot of hard plastics but on some of the key touch points like here on the steering wheel here a little bit here we get some nice softer leathers which you know does the job well so overall i think this cabin in terms of quality i think it's 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 decent enough and i think it does the job of what you need a car like that to do right it's, it's to get you places so let's go places and let's go drive this corando i'm now driving the corando and i must say the thing that strikes me the most right now is just how quiet it is so i'm doing 75 on the highway and yeah, it's really not noisy at all, so we don't have much wind noise. The engine is actually really nice and quiet. So as a result, the only thing you really end up hearing is actually the tire noise, which yes, is there, but you know, not intrusive in any way. And I must say it really adds to that sense of comfort in this car. And really with this car, comfort is its calling card. The suspension is really nice and smooth. It's not particularly soft, so the car doesn't bounce up and down a lot. And I think that's quite a nice change with cars in this class, usually they tend to be either too bouncy or a little bit too stiff. I think this one strikes a nice, easy balance between the two. Under the bonnet, we have a 1.5 litre turbocharged engine. So the numbers are on paper kind of nice. 161 brake horsepower, 280 newton meters of torque, which if you compare to other like 1.5 turbo engines, it's probably on the higher end of the scale. Um, I think it gets the job done. It's not particularly sporty engine, which it shouldn't be, right? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a runabout crossover. But what you do get is a nice sense of torque. You know, when you just put your foot down a little bit, not super hard, just a little bit, you get a nice smooth pull. And I like that the engine, you, it doesn't feel like it's working very hard, which is, which is nice. The other thing I do like is, I find like with some of these compact crossovers, they, the cars tend to be geared for efficiency, right? So this one doesn't seem that way. It's not the most efficient car in the world, but what you do get is a much smoother experience. You don't feel that in the, sorry, the gearbox constantly sort of hunting a, a, a higher gear in that sense. So yeah, overall, I must say I'm quite impressed with this car. More, it's more impressive than I thought it would be. It's nice to drive. It's comfortable to drive. There is a sense of driving refinement and a overall refinement to the drivetrain that I think is actually quite impressive. For example, also the start-stop, when you come to a complete stop, you know, engine cuts off and it kicks in again. Yes, you can hear the, the thing going on, but you don't feel it. It doesn't like really like, you know, some cars, it will like, vibrate a little bit. But with this one, no, it's, it's nice and smooth, which, yeah, it's really quite nice. So the Sangyong Corando, will buy, won't buy, or go try. For me, this is a definite go try. You know, in this segment, in this compact crossover segment, you have a ton of choices. Everyone wants a compact crossover these days, and therefore every car manufacturer is making a cross compact crossover these days. And obviously with different brands, you get different offerings, right? Some brands give you more equipment, some brands give you more style, more sort of interior comfort. Some brands give you more performance. Some brands give you more efficiency. I think what you get from this Corando is an overall quality of drive comfort that I think does elevate itself a little bit compared to some of the competition, right? So I like that it's light and easy to drive. You know, the, the engine is honestly 
much smoother than than I expected. And I think the overall drive sensation feels a little bit continental in that sense. You know, you get that, that sense of smoothness that that you tend to, to think of when you think of Conti cars. And I think that's nice. With with a car like this, you know, some people might say, oh, Fang Yong never heard of this brand before. Which is why I say you have to go try because with all these compact crossovers, after a while, I mean, if you just look at them on a piece of paper, you can't really tell a different drive. So you do have to actually get behind the wheel and feel how they, they feel on the road because I think size-wise, they all look very similar, specs-wise, you know, comparable, but it's really how it feels on the road that I think determines whether the car is the right one for you. And I think for this Corando, I think it's very suitable if you want something that's very practical, you know, you've got a lot of boot space if you configure it correctly. The interior is very spacious and comfortable and it drives very nicely. Yes, you're not getting the last word in terms of equipment, but you know, that's sort of the compromise you make, right? So yeah, I, I think it's definitely a car that's worth trying. So there you have it. That's our review of the new Sanyong Corando. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section below. Do you think this is a will buy, won't buy, or will you go try this car? Do also like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to see more of our videos. And follow us on TikTok. You can see us doing TikTok things. All right, so till the next video, bye.